Hello and good morning. Thank you for joining me another Wednesday live. And actually, uh, this is kind of a bonus one because I was not thinking that I was on this week because I was on last week, but just the way that the calendar falls, um, I have one today. So I get to be with you guys. And I have a really fun project, of course, uh, to do with you. So uh, get on and tell me hello and that you are watching. Debbie Hedges is on, hello. Uh, Kimberly is on. Rebecca, hello. Paula De Leon. Carol Beal. Uh, Claire is on to answer any questions. Kathy Warren, hello. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, did you all catch Kendra twice yesterday? She <laughs> she had two lives today, so or yesterday, so we had the throwback Tuesday, the little uh, miss set. We brought her back. And uh, then Kendra had her back to basics on at five o'clock Pacific time yesterday. So we have been watercoloring all day. Her and I have been watercoloring all day. And I also tried to get all the ink off of my hands and no luck at all. So um, I did a bunch of little projects. So I can't wait to show you guys what our projects are today. Uh, super, super fun to do. And um, this, uh, these series of tutorials that I'm doing, these are uh, probably what I would consider intermediate projects. That's why Kendra is doing Back to Basics. She's doing a lot of simple uh, Back to Basics, simple stamping. For those of you who are new to this technique, uh, those are very, very informative and not intimidating at all. And especially if you're starting out and not quite sure about this technique and if you're going to love it and if you're going to be able to do it. So follow Kendra on Tuesdays at five o'clock Pacific time. She will be on every week and then twice a month I'll be on. And I have uh, also simple projects, but they're a little bit more challenging for those of you who've been doing this for a while and need a challenge. So basically what that means is that we're using more stamps. We're using more stamps, more markers, and a lot of positioner. So um, welcome to the intermediate class. Uh, Deanna, hello. Uh, checking out where you guys are all from. Love Kendra's live. Vicki, yeah, she is so good. Kendra is so good and just so much fun. She loves all of you so much. It's her favorite thing to do is to get on there and do the lives. So. She loves spending time with you. Hello, Tony. Debbie, Kendra's Back to Basics is awesome for all levels. Yes, it is. And some of those little things, sometimes you can be struggling with something and it is the littlest thing. Uh, maybe dipping your brush too far into the water. Maybe forgetting to pinch it off. Maybe uh, that you're stabbing and not dabbing. You know, all of those little things really, really make a difference you know, when you're completing these projects and wanting them to look like watercolor. So it's really, really good to watch those basics. And, you know, just as a reminder, even if you've been doing this for a long time, you're going to learn something new every time. You really, really will. Lisa is watching. Hello, Helen. Hello from Ohio, sunny Ohio. It's trying to be sunny here. It's a little overcast, but we've got sun in the forecast for the next few days. So you know, I am so happy for spring. I just cannot wait for spring and some flowers. That's why I've been doing a lot of flowers and a lot of floral things because I'm so ready for that. Uh, so let's get into our project. Uh, speaking of the positioner, now last time I said, uh, well, I, and I just said that we use the positioner a lot. So it comes with, those of you who have never bought one, it looks like this, a little L bar like this, and it has a little acrylic plate. And it comes with the little plate like this in a box. It's super easy to travel with. It's really small and handy. But I have about 12 of these things and I use them so often. And when you're doing these complex projects where you need the positioner several times, it's really nice to have extras of these. So these are now on our website and I believe uh, someone will be posting that link uh, on in the comments so you'll be able to see where to get these so you can now buy these little plates individually you can use all four corners uh, sometimes you know if you don't take the stamp off of the block you can just leave it on here but when you're doing these complex projects and you're using a lot of stamps that need to be positioned it's really handy to have extras of these that you can just uh, you don't have to clean them off every time so 
let me tell you what we're going to be doing today. So I, you know, put a lot of thought into these Wednesdays because I only have two a month. So I really like to, uh, number one, make sure you're learning something, teach you something new and different, and of course, challenge you. So I had in my mind when I came out with this die set, this is the uh, shadow box of die. We just released it and it's for, it's made for the windows to the world. Now the windows to the world, um, let me just show you one. They look like this. So it's a little image, easy to color, it has a sentiment around it and you can just, you know, make a card really, really quickly and easily. So the die creates a, um, a shadow box and it looks like this. And so it, it makes it three dimensional. And there are four new sets now that come with this uh, in this line. And let me just quickly show you what they are. So there's this one, there's a deer, this little deer set. Now the difference with these is that they have an extra little piece that pops out. So it comes with a die and it cuts that out. So these are the four. This little one comes with a bridge that pops out. And then this one, the boat. And then uh, this one has a little mailbox that, that popped out. But when I created this die, I was really thinking about the watercolor as well. And I love things that are versatile. I love things that you can use multiple uh, different ways. And so I am going to show you how to uh, create some little watercolor projects that will fit in your shadow box. So if you own this little shadow box die, and if you don't, you can uh, just use these little simple projects and put them on a card or put them in a frame. They're so cute. They're two inches by two inches. And I really kind of got carried away with them. I planned to do about three or four and I ended up with eight. And I could have done another eight, easily done another eight because these elements are really, really small. And this is a two by two inch canvas. So it's really, really uh, quick and easy to do. Very simple. And here's that little shadow box of die that creates the back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to do. I'm thinking we will. I'm hoping we get through four of them. Uh, that would be half. And then next next time I'm on. So in two weeks when I'm back, we'll do the other four. But I love these little projects. They're kind of addicting, and you can just keep going, going, going. So um, that being said, let's get on with the project. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more close up when I switch my camera around. I'll show you a little bit more uh, detail about this little shadow box and how to do this. And then I'll show you how to put one together at the very end. So uh, let's get going, you guys. Are you ready to do this project? Now, let me just say that I didn't get a supply list up to Claire uh, because I, like I said, I was only going to do a couple of them. I ended up with eight. And let me just show you um, the stack of sets uh, that I used. So uh, just a huge, a huge amount of sets that I use. Now, you know, you don't need to have all of these, but I do like to mix it up in case you have you don't have the one I'm using. You can use something else. So I'm you I've got a ton and I will show you what I'm using, but you'll get the concept and you'll be able to use the things that you have because like I said, these are tiny little canvases and they're just they're just so fun. They're just so fun to do. This is like my new favorite thing to do now. And this is such a quick, simple little card. And you know, the painting is the focal point. So I also love that. You don't have to do a lot of embellishment on the card because this, this is your hand created, one of a kind original. And that's what you're focusing on with this card. So it doesn't have to be buried in a lot of, um, a lot of details. Okay, so uh, enough talking about that. So let me switch this over. So please bear with me that I don't, I'm always afraid I'm gonna cut you guys off. Okay, here we go. Let me get myself situated here and move my, move my camera. Okay, so uh, let me get this out of the way so that I can at least show you our projects. And let me kind of go through them a little bit. Here's the little can. These are, see how small these canvases are? They're so, so tiny. And that's what is so fun about them is because you can literally do them in just a few minutes. So I did, I picked this one up, the little church. Basically what I did was get out things that I had and, you know, incorporated them into um, little 
little pictures. So I tried to do some different uh, different things just to give you more ideas. So let me just kind of line these all up here so that you can see. Let me just position this a little bit better here. And I'll try to hold things up because we are doing small little projects. So um, I will try to hold them up so that you can see what I'm doing here. And then, so these seven, these seven, and then the little birds that I have in the card. So here's the eighth project here. And I just used the little bird bath. You can see it doesn't take very many stamps at all. And they're just, it's just so fun to put them in a little shadow box like that because it makes it look three dimensional. And you can see it really um, creates a neat effect. Now, the other neat thing about this is that the way that it's made, it folds flat when you close the card. So let me show you the inside. So here's a little shadow box uh, template. And when you close it, uh, close the card, it folds flat and then it pops open. So they're really, really, really fun to do. And we can spend as much time on this as you would like to. And the neat thing about these little canvases is even if you don't use the shadow box die, um, well, even if you don't put it in a shadow box, you can just take, uh, let me just show you, this is part of it here, and I'll show you, kind of show you what's involved in that, in that shadow box set. But you can, you can just even uh, just do it like that and just make it decorative and put it on your card like that. Um, super easy. So here's, here's what that die set comes with. It comes with the die that creates the shadow box. That's this one. And then the decorative front, uh, which is this. So your little window panes, this one. Now this, this cuts out the hole in the card. So this cuts the opening here. It's also what I used to size these little guys. And what I did was I just cut out a little watercolor piece from this die, a little piece of scratch paper, and then I just traced it onto my watercolor paper uh, with a pencil. Now I know that I have a, the right size to fit inside the shadow box. And it re basically it's two by two. It's two inches by two inches, but I just, you know, me and rulers, I don't like to measure stuff. It's much easier for me to trace around things and I love that I can just do that. So I just cut this out, traced around it, and I had the perfect size. So it comes with these three. It also comes with the windowsill, which is this little piece here. And then uh, you get the little hello, the little hello die, which goes on here. So really simple card, super easy to do. And this, of course, is the fun part, the little... Um, the little watercolors. So like I said, if you would like to do more of these, you know, by all means, let me know in the comments because um, we can just, we can spend another week on this, just doing these little canvases. And I don't know if you guys do the little um, artist trading cards, you could change the size of these just a little bit and you would have those too. So um, let me show you what... <laughs> Let me show you what I've used on all of these. Well, first let me show you what these are. Okay, so I tried to pick something that would go in the background like these. Now this one, uh, these are both very similar. This one is the simple scene. So I use this one, the little simple scene back in here. And so you can use it in a little two inch canvas as well, which is really neat because see how big the stamp is? You know, it's really big, but it works great on a little two inch canvas because you're just using that little path. Now I, you know, with these new sets, they come with an extra piece and the die that cuts it out. So I thought, I wonder if that would work with these. And I think it does. So I put this, these little, um, these little flowers in the corner and then I stamped another one and just cut it out and popped it up. So I think that would be really cute in that shadow box. So you're getting something that is a little three dimensional as well. So simple scene, shadow box. This also works really well to do something large in the front. So when you put that, so if you think about how it's gonna look, see how cute that is? If you think about what's outside of your window, when you're looking out of your window, what are you gonna see? And you're gonna see these flowers that are right, probably in a window box, right in front of your window. So I think that is, um, that's a really cute idea. And the other thing is it takes up half of your canvas. So it's really, really quick. 
You can do that super fast. Do something large in the foreground and then something fall, small in the background. Um, I always like to do a little uh, beach scene. I think these are so fun to do when you're on vacation. Just do a little scene like this, maybe outside of your hotel window, which would be really, really fun to do. Or if you, you know, have a little place on the beach, that would also be fun. Uh, this one is basically just foliage. Uh, this you can do, you don't even need a branch. You can just put vines in and flowers. So that's the reason I picked this one is because even if you've got, this is probably one, two, three, four, five stamps, but you certainly could do it with four stamps. And, you know, and really if you use the vine, three. So it doesn't, it, they don't have to be super complex, I guess is what I'm saying. They don't have to be super complex. They can be really, really easy. And I think these simple ones are also just, just so cute. So you can kind of get an idea of what they're gonna look like in that, in that shadow box outside your window. Um, you know, we're always looking for cards for guys. So here's one that um, I think would be really cute. This is from the, the little mini structures. I put the little boat in front of it and you could just see that right out your window. So cute. Uh, I like this idea because it sort of frames the whole thing and then you could put your little focal point in the center, which is also really, really fun. So you could even put a couple of little birds sitting out here. You could put a little fox sleeping in the, in the grass, a little cat. Uh, I put the little chair and table from the wrought iron set, but you know, like I said, you're putting something large in the background and in the foreground. And so when you place this on here, it looks like you're you're just looking out your, your backyard. Just so, so cute. And then this one, so then I picked this one. Well, and actually this one too. Uh, those of you who have bought the little mist set, uh, Kendra got through the little girl and she used some of the, um, I think she used some of the elements that came with that, but it also comes with this really, really cute covered bridge. And I love this little covered bridge. So I thought, you know what, those of you who have bought that little miss, I'm gonna show you how to use that little covered bridge here. And I also use the um, the cloud line. So you can see, here's another, here's another um, example of a large stamp. This is the cloud line, see how big it is? It works great on a little two inch canvas. And when I actually created this years and years ago, so that little mist set, that is the first one of the uh, project series. There were nine in that project series. And this was the first one. And when I created this cloud line, I wanted it to be different enough so that you could use different parts of it and maybe stack it. So that's why it's so long. It's so, so long, but I, uh, I love it. I really love it. You have to be careful that you don't get it on there too dark but it is, it really, really works well. So uh, I'm gonna use that too. I know Kendra used it, but I'm gonna use it in this one too. So uh, for those of you who have gotten that set, um, you still have time, by the way. I think uh, the sale goes through tomorrow, but, uh, and you, you guys, these, are, these have come back because you guys requested them. They have been gone for a long, long, long time. And we brought them back because you guys have requested them. So happily we did that. We're gonna bring back one every month. Uh, the first Tuesday of the month, and um, it's really kind of fun to use them again. You know, because it's been gone for so long, and because it is an older set, I haven't used this little covered bridge in, I mean, many years. So it is kind of fun to get those out and play with them again. So I really was trying to uh, think about different ways to use these, and then this little bird bath. Get a large focal focal uh, point in the front. You could have a little hanging basket outside your window. So you could just have a pot and draw some little strings in there or some little um, wire in there. And you've got a cute, fun, simple little project that can be right outside your window. So they don't have to be tiny and scenes like this. It could be something really, really simple, something large like the bird bath. And then, you know, I just put some flowers in front and flowers behind. So Anyway, you can see how this um, can be extremely addicting and you could just keep going, going. So that's part, okay, so the, all this to say, this is why I didn't have a supply list for Claire, but she is putting together, I think, a kind of a list of what I'm using. And then next time, uh, if we decide to finish up these little mini canvases, uh, on the next live, then we'll have a much better comprehensive list of what I'm using. So let me just, don't panic, you know, and be overwhelmed by this giant stack. 
but you know, not everybody has the specific things that I'm using. So I try to mix it up so that I hit something that you have. So that's kind of what I was doing here too, was trying to pick things that maybe you, you have already. So any of these little structures, you know, these, these little structures can work. Any of the little structures will work. The little village that just came out, any of those little things are gonna work for uh, projects that are in the background like this. So in this case, I used um, the little um, church, but I used from this set, this little cabin here, this little cabin by a stream, okay? Uh, in that same little picture, I used the little rocks here. I love these little guys. If you guys, if you have this set, keep these little rocks out where you can see them because they are so versatile. I used them right here uh, next to this little creek. And uh, of course we'll use them in the, in the actual projects. So of course, flower set one and two, or foliage set one, flower set one. These are the go-tos. So if you are new and starting out, that's where you wanna start with foliage one and foliage, or flower set one and foliage set one. 4051 and 4052. These are the ones that you want to start with. Um, here's the little mist. Now here's that little uh, covered bridge. So that's this one. And then the little cloud line. I mean the big cloud line. So we're going to we're going to use those. Here's that little bird bath. This one here and I also picked a couple of birds from here. I think this one and this one in this set. But how cute also if you were doing that bird bath you know, if you had the little birds out here and you just hung a couple of little bird, little bird um, houses in here, I think that would be so cute. And then you could have your little birds flying all around and your flowers down below. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, there are so many options because there are so many little things. There are tons of little things, little flowers, little foliages, little structures, and you can incorporate them into these these projects. Okay, here's the little barn I used. I used this one here in this project and the fence. So this little guy right here, one of my favorite things out of the set. Uh, this, my my one of my all-time favorites, my mini, mini foliage set. Uh, we used this one back here in the back, this one, the little tiny grasses, the little trees. And then I think this, yep, this tree here, little evergreen, this one. So lots out of that set. These grasses here, that's what this is, are these two grasses, these little purple flowers, and then the little dots, we use those. Uh, foliage set four, so this one, the grasses, I used that, and I think, uh, I'm not sure that I used anything else on here, I think just the grasses, so um, I kind of lost track after a while. Okay, the little church, so this little one right here, that's this little church. Uh, these little flowers. I love, love these little flowers. Now here's that grass again, that same one that I used over here, and it goes both directions. So it can go to the right and it can go to the left. And then, you know, once I add that little purple detail, I put some of these in and it kind of brings it forward. Now you can see the difference. This has a lot more of this flower in it than this one. This is a little more grassy looking. So this one, uh, I just picked a long stem. It happened to be this long stem, but you can use any and I just put it into this cluster here. So that's where this goes, is in here. Uh, this one, I use this, this flower here. I love this one, this little blue one. I think I used it twice in here, yep, same one. Now, if you just have this one, you can certainly use it here, or here, or here. You can use it in any of these. Uh, this one, I use this foliage. Now, I have not used this in a long time, but it is so great. And I got it out because I remembered how much I loved it. And it's this one right here. It just works great. You can fill up a corner really easily and quickly and then put some flowers in it, some long stems. It is so cute. It is so cute. So that's this one. Uh, here's the simple scene I used. And you can see I only used a small part of it, just kind of the center, a little path, and then this little background back in here. The palm trees, these, these little guys, we use that in the tropical one, this one. And then a little red iron set. So actually I used the small one. So I used these two chairs and this little table um, right here. 
the branches, this guy, and I used that to hang the tree over the top of this little waterway. And then the boat. So here's that little rowboat that is at the bottom of this. And wow, I think, I think that's all. I don't, I don't even want to count how many sets that is. But you know, the fun thing about it, you don't need to do eight different ones. I mean, unless you want to. You could do three or four and then make a bunch of them because uh, this, this little die is really, really easy to put together. And you could cut out a bunch of these and just have them all ready to go. And all you do is slip that, slip your little um, project, see like this, it just slips into there, into the die. And then it's just glued onto the back of the card. I mean, it's just nothing to it. Super, super easy to do. So I like things quick and easy. Um, Okay, so the question is, where do we start? So what I was thinking is um, something simple and then something a little more complex. So let's just let's just kind of start at the beginning. Let's do the guy. I feel like this is a this is one of those cards that people would like to see because you're always looking for those, you know, a masculine some something masculine. Let's do this one because it is from the Little Miss, and then let's do this one because it's also from that Little Miss set. And it's gonna it's gonna go away after tomorrow. So let's do that, and then uh, maybe this one because we've got two structures, and then we'll leave two structures for next time, and the little bird bath. So if you guys want to see more of this, just put that in the comments and let me know, and I can certainly do that. I had so much fun doing those. Okay, so wow, that was very windy. Let's get going on these. Here are my um, here are my watercolor uh, canvases, and we are. I'm going to just bring this forward just a little bit here, and make sure that I'm I'm in the center. And like I said, I will I'll hold these things up so that you can see it. So let me show you a close up of this one. This is the one we're going to do with the little uh, purple flowers in the front. Uh, this one that kind of creates a little uh, frame around a center. So here's your focal point, and you could put anything in there, absolutely anything. So what what you're sh what I'm showing you is basically this area, and then, you know, I put the little chairs and uh, tables in there. Um, the little beach one with the cloud line. So we'll do that. And you guys, okay, I'm seeing you're, you love this series and you wanna do more. Okay, I am 100% in with you on that because I just, you know, I'm just really into little things lately. I just love little, tiny um, projects like this. And I think that little shadow box is so fun to do. And I think you could dress it up so many different ways. You know, at the end, if we have time, I'll show you what our design team did with the card samples. They're so cute. Um, okay, so let's let's get going. Did I hold this one up? I think I did. And I'll hold them up as I go too. So uh, let's start out with let's start out with this one, that little covered bridge. And the first thing we want to do is tape off uh, all around uh, the little frame because you don't want to get you don't want to um, ink up all around. Now, if you're using the die to cut it out, which you can, you can use this die and just cut your project out. You can do that now. Then you don't have to worry about it. You can just use this kind of as a guide and you can stamp outside of the lines is no big deal. I I kind of like the little white border. I kind of like that. It looks like a finished project and it shows a little bit of the canvas behind. So I I like to tape it off just so that I can, you know, really see kind of see what's back there. So that's what let's do. So I've got my post-it tape and I can just just tape this off just right underneath my pencil line. This is so handy. And you can use these over and over again. You know, just take them off, attach into something, and, um, and use them again. Okay, so let me, st I'm still trying to adjust this so that I can Get this in the center. Okay, I think I think we're in the center. I've got my palette here so that you can see. And I think I got my project center. Okay, so let's get going on this. The first thing we're gonna do, of course, is to uh, ink and stamp this little um, 
Covered Bridge. Man, my recall. Do you got you? My recall lately of things is so getting so bad. I mean, tell me if you guys have the same problem or is it just, is it senioritis? Because I, the word is like right there and I cannot, I can't think of it. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this off. I don't want it too dark. And then I'm just going to uh, stamp it kind of up in the corner, uh, just like that. You can use your positioner if you're not quite sure where to uh, where to stamp it, but this is the easiest way. Just, just put it up in the corner. So now we're gonna dip our brush in water. And I got my water right here. So let me just put this over here so that we can reach it. Pinch your brush off. Too much on our minds. I know. I know. That is exactly right. We just nail exactly. Too much on our minds. It's like one thing comes in and something leaves. If we take something in, something else goes out the door. Okay, so I'm pulling the color out of the lines now. It's just the starting, just the first step. And, you know, you're pulling that color. You're on the outside of the lines. Okay, so we will, um, we're going to add some more color now to this. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my brown. This is my brown, 969. And by the way, that was a 969 and a 565 that I inked out with. And I'm just going to take some of this color now, just a little bit and brush it onto the roof. Keep that highlight, you know, at the top. And then we're going to put some down along here to the same color. And we can kind of darken this, this little frame too. Okay, and I'm going to add a little, whoops, that is wrong. Now I have this one marked because look how gray that color is. And this is actually the color of that marker. But it's because I use it to stamp. So I ink it with two colors and then it gets that brown on it and turns gray. So I use that one just for inking my stamps and then I have another one that I use just for adding color. Or I would just have everything be gray. I don't know if that's happened to you, but um, it does pick up that color. So I'm gonna add some blue over here. Now this is the shadow side. So I can actually color all of this in solid. And when you do that, when you pick a, sh a shady side like that, you're adding dimension to your image just by doing that. You're actually creating a lot of dimension. Now back in here, you know, back inside, this is gonna be dark in here. And the farther back you go, the darker it's gonna be. And we can add a little blue under here as well. Now with this, uh, now you can see on here, on this little project, I made that roof uh, really rustic and it looks like it's planks laying on top, like it's old. So in order to do that, if you want to do that, take your fine tip, your twin tone, and you're just gonna make another row along the, uh, along the roof, okay? And then you're going to make a, uh, a little dot from the center of this line to here because you've got some perspective here. Now, this isn't just straight on. So you're going from a small area to a large area. So it's better to start in the center if you're going to do that. So pull this, this over and just connect these lines. And then split the difference. Just like that. And you can add another one in here if you want to. And then bring this line down. And then do the same over here. So you're going to draw a line here. And you're going to kind of um, just, just make some little lines in here. Like planks. Okay, so let me just let me just hold this up so that you can see. You see that detail along the edge? You're really you're putting two lines in here. You're pulling that color, you're pulling that line down. See that little tiny line right there? You're pulling that line down. 
and creating those planks. Okay, so let's go in now and darken these windows so that we get some dimension in here. And I'm just gonna kind of close. Remember, you always want to leave the side of that window, so don't color the whole thing in. So you wanna see that side. Let me hold this up again so you can see it. These things are so small. See this, the edge of that window? You wanna be able to see that. Otherwise, it looks like your wall is paper thin. And then I just took my, uh, my pencil to make this detail on the front and I just made some little the neat thing about a pencil is that you can erase it just like I did. And then on the very bottom one, you just wanna make an extra little line on the bottom. And then we can just put a little bit of a shadow under that. And then shadow like that. The you know, and when you do these things, you know, you're turning this into a three-dimensional project. And now it looks much more like a thing. And we can actually put a little shadow back here too. Kind of mess it up a little bit. You can still see the little lines on there, so you're not erasing anything. So we've got that done. So let's go ahead and put our trees in. I mean, that really was the hardest part, was just putting the covered bridge in. But it's just, it's so cute. So here's that little tree from the, the, um, the mini foliage set. And we're just going to ink the, tr the tree trunk, the branches. And I'm just using, you just use any, any green. And you're just going to stamp this, you know, a couple of times in here like that. And then... Um, Let's get the foliage that goes with it. I have so many stamps out here, you guys. They're just everywhere. Now this can go either way. So this little stamp, the little leaves, so this is the leaves that go in that foliage set. And they, you just literally hit it a couple of times and you're done. And we can bring some, see over here too, from the other side. And then you just, you just tap. Always pinch off your brush. Always dab and pinch it off. And then, you know, when you're getting this color in, you know, when you're coloring this, make sure you, you're going to the line. So you're getting enough color in there so that you can see that, you can see that border when you pull the, pull the tape off. So we've got this little tree hanging out over the top and now we can add some some sky in here you know along this top border can you know leave some white spaces for some clouds too and just kind of blend this all together little things are so fun and you know I would you know if I were just doing a bunch of these I would make a whole bunch of them I would just make a bunch of them and just all the same so that I have something because they're really good for any occasion now here's the grass and I'm just kind of coming along this this edge you know where it looks like the, the road would be And you want to leave enough space down below for those those little purple flowers. But this is just the easiest thing to put in here is this grass. Just pull that, just pull that color up. And then take a little of this blue and you're just going to kind of draw this across the across the road. Just just like little like little shadows. And then this this back in here, where the road is back in here, this would be really dark. And I'm actually just taking some of this gray that I have on here. So this would just go way back in here. Okay. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's do our little flowers in the front and we're just about done with this. Um, we'll add our little flowers in the background too, but for now, so we want these things kind of leaning to the right. So we're gonna use the one that goes to the left and we're gonna ink this with two colors. So let's pick a different green. This is the cool green. We've been using the 177. We've been using this one. So this is 249, it's the cool green. And we're just gonna ink the grassy part with the green. And then we're gonna ink the, the little buds at the top uh, with the purple. And you'd, we're just gonna put it in just kind of like this. grass in there again and add a little more I mean you can put as much of this in as you want it's going to look different every time but that is the fun thing about it and these little things you know if you get those little cute little frames that are you know just tiny little frames there's these are so cute framed just putting a little frame for someone love that idea So now we've got our little flowers in there. And you're just going to bring this grass down to the bottom edge. And you can see I kind of broke it up a little bit, didn't make it all the same. Kind of turned them a little bit. So it kind of looks like the wind's blowing a little bit. If you make them all one direction, well, that wind is coming in and pulling those flowers down. But if you kind of mix it up, it kind of gives you the idea that it's kind of a breezy day and it's just sun's out and flowers are just kind of blowing in the breeze you know sometimes it's about the feeling you know of the painting too how it makes you feel okay so I'm gonna take that that little purple this little guy, remember I told you that I add this to, to it later? So I'm gonna use this one and just add a few of these. This brings it forward a little bit and I'm just gonna ink the blooms. They're just a little bit bigger and I can drop them down a little bit like that. And you know, you don't have to add much water at all. We don't want to lose the shape. We just want to blend it out so that it doesn't look all look the same. I think that's so cute. And I think if we uh, just clean this stamp off, um, we can just use the tip. We can just use the tips of this and put a few back in here. So let's just do that. So just the tip and just add a few back in here. Just a little bit. And then just, you know, always go back in and see where you can um, add. You know, I'm darkening this up underneath here, this underneath here, that's gonna be dark. This back here. So let's take off the mask. Check this out. And then just erase your, uh, your pencil line. So you can just make sure it's dry first. And then always, you know, of course, be sure to sign and date. And I think that little guy is just so cute. And I would probably just sign it down here because you want to be able to see it. 
you know, over the top. If you sign it down here, you won't be able to see it, especially if you're putting it in the shadow box, but see how cute that is? So simple. So that was just a few stamps. One, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Counting the grass. Super cute. And, you know, you can always add more to it. You know, this is just the basic, um, the basics, but um, you can you can always add more flowers and you know more grasses and all of that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So that took us about 15 minutes. Not bad. And if you were kind of streamlining this, you could make you could make several of them in a in a um, in an hour easily. So I'm just using the same tape again. It's so handy. And just covering up those covering up those lines. Okay, so which one should we do next? Let's do this one. This one with the little frame. So easy, you guys. These this you could do all day. This is so and and, and the neat thing about it is you can put anything in the center. Uh, I think a little cat sleeping would be so cute, or any of those little um, any of those little characters. Uh, Catherine, 15 minutes for you, 30 for me, LOL. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes sometimes they take me a while. And you know what? I, I do them over again too. So sometimes I'm not happy with it and then I have to redo it because something bugs me. You know, I don't like the color I chose or the placement of something. And so then I do it again. But that's why I'm saying if you if you did a bunch of them, you would get so good at it. You would get so good at this combination because you're doing, you know, a ton of them. And then you've got all these little cards ready to go. So cute. Um, okay, so let's get going on this one. We're going to take the vine. This is the vine from the um, the flower set. And here's the or the uh, foliage set one. And this is the flower for from flower set one. So we're going to use those two back, back in the back. And then uh, this little, where is that little flower? This guy, this guy right here. We're going to use this one. And I'm not sure what color is on it, so let's just clean it off really good. Um, just a baby wipe, you know, if you're wanting to know how to clean your stamps, just a baby wipe will do it. I, you know, usually it doesn't matter how clean it is, so I use my thumb, which is why my hands are always just so, so messy. But it's, you know, it's just one of those things that can't be helped. It just is. Um, okay, so let me move this over to make sure I'm in the center. And let's get going on this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp the vine a few times, and we're just going to use a green, so it doesn't matter what green you use. And you don't need the whole thing, just, you know, maybe um, two-thirds of it. And just come out from the side. And then maybe... Um, Maybe one more here, and then maybe we'll just get a few more in here like this. I think that looks good. And then we're going to add some flowers now, and we're going to use that uh, really pretty violet. This is a 676. Really, really like this color. I uh, wonder what's on this too. I wonder if I should just. And that had some blue on it, so I'll just clean that off. And I don't necessarily need the whole thing, so I'm just going to use about half of this. And you want to, you know, stamp it in a in a in a repeat. So one, two, three, four, five. You know, and stamp it off of there. Okay, and once I got it stamped on there, I can just now add my water to it, pinch your brush off, and then just kind of soften this all up. You know, probably start with the flowers. And just kind of blend it all in. And then hit the, hit the vines. You're just touching it. You know, you're not painting. 
just kind of softening all the little lines. And then let's let's add a little sky in here, just kind of in the back. because uh, we're kind of creating this little this little circle, this little focal point. So we can kind of darken the sky up on top. And then as we come down, you want to kind of make it softer. Softer and lighter. We can put a little more blue in here. Maybe a little more blue in here where you can see the sky kind of through the leaves. And then just kind of bring it, you know, to the to the center. So if this is your center, you kind of want to bring it over to the center and kind of let it fade out and be really light. Okay, just like that. And then let's do something on the bottom here. So let's get those, um, those little blue flowers in, those little guys. And we're just going to ink them in two colors. So this is the uh, 526. Enough color on there. And then the, the green, the warm green. And just kind of, you know, again, you're, you're kind of creating this border. So you want to you wanna kind of make a circle here with these. And then add some more over here. You know, you have to really pay attention when you're doing two different colors because I don't know how many times I have um, stamped the bloom green. Get mixed up, you know, what color you're on. And then, um, and then I, just, I just figure it's a, it's a bud. And just let it go. So if that's happened to you, you're not the only one. Okay, you don't need to do anything to the um, to the stems. In other words, you don't you don't want to just paint over them. You don't want to do anything to the stems. If you're going to do anything, you're going to just jump around a little bit like this, and just soften it, kind of create a background. But if you if you if you go with if you take your brush and you go along the stem, it's going to be too um, too heavy, too thick. So now let's take some really light green. Really, really light. And let's put something in the background. A little, little grassy hill. It's almost hazy looking. Looks like a little hazy background. really light. You can always come back in and make it darker. So better to keep it, keep it really light. And then we can add some more, uh, some grasses and stuff once we get those little chairs in. So let's get the little chairs and table in. And uh, we're going to use a positioner on that because we want to make sure we get them placed right. So here's the little chairs and here's the little table. Now I'm going to put the table in first. And I, when I when I inked these before, I've inked them several different ways. I've inked them in the in the dark brown. I've actually inked them in black. Uh, I've added a blue, kind of like a patina look. But I really really like these green. So in this case, I inked them green, and I think they look really cute. They don't stick out, you know, so much. They kind of look like they fade back a little bit. So. And I'm going to do two colors of green. So I'm going to use the 249 and the 177. And then I'm going to use the, um, the positioner. Stamp that in the corner so that I can get this where I want it, which would be probably right there. Maybe just down a little bit. Okay, and I'm just gonna hit it one more time with the green to make sure that it's dark enough. And you know, with these little things and these tiny little legs, don't put too much pressure on them. And if you have to practice stamping it a little bit before you actually put it into your composition, do that so that you don't have uh, something that looks 
you know, like this, where you've got this, these wide legs, you know, like this. You don't want anything like that. You want it to be really, really thin, um, just like that. Okay, so let's do this little chair. So we're going to do two colors on this one, too. Got green, both greens. This is where the multiple little acrylic plates come in too because you just keep you can just keep turning them and using different corners. And I think this guy can kind of sit back just like this. Actually maybe a little closer. And then I'm going to hit this one again with that same green. And I pull that, I pull my L bar away uh, so that I can get a good impression. And you just want a, a good, you know, solid impression. You don't want to push on it too hard and get too heavy of a line. And then this one facing the other way. We're going to do the exact same thing again. But there's no way to line these things up without a positioner. You just, you wouldn't be able to see um, where they go. So the cool green, the warm green. And then positioner. And I think this one right there. And then let's hit it again. Place it in the corner and then, you know, just move this away so you get a good impression. And that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to take my, uh, my really tiny brush, my number one, and you can see how, how tiny it is, and just get uh, the tops of the chairs and the table. You really don't need to do much else on these. You know, they're they're pretty detailed the way they are. Uh, I would put a little shadow in um, just underneath. Just like that. And then if you have room to add some grass in here, uh, you can do that. And I would use the tiny, tiny grass. If you have this one, I would use this one. This is from the tiny, the little uh, new foliage set, the teeny, teeny grass. I would use this one if you have this one. Back to my number four brush. And then just pull that out okay so let's look at this reveal and see how this looks this one was really really simple too this was less than 15 minutes you guys so so cute and then uh, of course you're going to erase your lines when you erase the lines, it really changes it. It just looks so much better without that pencil line on there. And then of course, sign and date, which I will do before I forget. Okay, so we've gotten two done. How cute are those? And like I said, you could you could just cut it out with your little die and it's all ready to go. Or you can just cut it out on your, you know, paper cutter, um, a two inch square. So let's get through, let's just at least go through one more. Um, let's get through this one. This will take us probably to uh, at least 20 minutes. So that's, this three is probably all we'll get through. But if you want to continue on with this, uh, I will definitely take the next live and do some more of these. And then if we want to continue on again, we can do that too. So we can just keep going as long as you want to go on this, 
on this series. Okay, so let's get this set up. Here's our little project. So the first thing we're gonna do is get that little boat in. This one right here. And we're gonna ink it in two colors. So that would be that 969. Oh, whoops, what am I forgetting? Tape it off. I've done this many times also. You know, any mistake that you think you've made, I have made it. There is not a mistake you've made that I have not made. And sometimes, you know, it can't be fixed, but most of the time we can fix it. And the nice thing too, you know, these little projects, if you're only spending, you know, 10 or 15 minutes on them, it's not so terrible if you have to start over again um, because you haven't invested, you know, hours and hours of time, you know, doing these. Um, okay, so brown, dark brown, and then blue, dark blue over the top. And then we're going to stamp it off. Well, we're going to use the positioner, so that's kind of stamping it off. And I think that's pretty good right here, just kind of in the corner. There we go. And let's get some, let's, let's take care of this little boat first. So we're gonna pull the color out of the lines, of course. That'll be our starting point. Um, I should be watching my comments too, you guys. Oh my word. Um, please continue. <laughs> yes, I will. You know, I, I think you guys are, I will love doing these. I really do. Um, so gorgeous, love them. Great, you guys. Okay, well, I for sure will. Um, I for sure will do some more until you're tired of these, but they're so fun. Okay, so I'm pulling the cards out of the um, the colors out of the line lines. And then I'm going to add some color now to this little boat. Now you can you can add whatever color you want to it. Uh, I really like this this blue, so I'm gonna put some some blue on here, just a little bit of color, just along the, just along the top and kind of follow these lines. You know, if they're bent, kind of follow the lines. It's going to make it look a lot more dimensional. We're always fighting things um, that look flat, trying to find ways that we can color things so that they don't look flat. And if you can do that, you will be amazed at how your little projects turn out. They're just so neat. Okay, and I'm just gonna take my dark brown and just kind of darken underneath here where this little bench is. pretty good and maybe we'll just make a little decorative thing on here these little oars so you don't have to do a lot to it that's literally all that you have to do so let's come in now with um, some a little grassy area on the bank and let's take some of this warm green And just, you're just going to kind of come along, you know, like this. We're going to leave that little boat kind of half in the water. And just kind of brush this in a little bit. You know, if you can uh, avoid straight lines, I think it adds a lot more interest uh, if you can do that. Just, you know, it's just kind of a reminder to do it. Uh, let's leave some white areas in the water that will show kind of show movement. And as it gets down here towards the boat, we want to keep that lighter because this little boat is kind of a focal point. And if you get too much dark color around it, you're going to kind of lose um, you're going to kind of lose that as an accent. And then let's put a little shadow in here.
and then down down here where these these little ores are I would have a shadow under there too so let's add some little grasses in and you don't you don't need to put any flowers in this if you're if you want a masculine card and you just you don't want any blooms and you don't want a lot of color um you don't have to do that You just keep it really simple. Add a little water. A little grass is just, it's one of those stamps that is just in everything. Just in everything. Okay, so now back here is where we're going to put our little structure. So let's get that little guy out, this one. And this is where you could put, you know, any, any little structure, a little house. You could just leave it blank too. You could put some trees back here and kind of make it out in the wilderness. Um, it's just, it's so much fun to do these. So I've got my little plexiglass and my little structure. So two colors, the dark brown. And when, when they're little like this, it really doesn't matter what order you do it. You know, when they're really small, you can do the brown first and then the blue or the other way. So I'm going to stamp this in the corner so that I can see. And I'm going to put it, you know, kind of at the top. I mean, pretty much, you know, at the top. And it's okay to stamp things off a little bit. I think that adds a little interest too. So we can stamp this off the page just a little bit. Okay, there we go. And these little structures, you know, they don't need a lot. They don't need a lot of color. Um, Jean Loftus, that's a great scene. Having three sons, it's perfect. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, that outdoorsy person that, you know, it's really hard to make a card for. And here's that, here's that shaded area again. You know, you want to do, you want to be sure to um, make that darker. And even when you're doing these little roofs, just stay in each section. Try to avoid, always try to avoid coloring anything in solid. Yeah, I'm just taking a little bit of this color out of the lines. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of uh, darken this little cabin a little bit, kind of old and rustic. I'm still, I'm, I'm using this gray. I mean, I really like this gray. So um, sometimes I get a color on my palette that I just really like and I, I don't want to clean it because I don't want to lose that color. Okay, so now let's add some detail to the windows and I'm going to use my twin tone. And here's where you got to get your glasses on and just really see this detail. I'm speaking to myself, of course. See these tiny little, little panes in the windows, but it makes such a difference when you do that. It really, really does. It adds so much. Got that shaded area in there still. And I'm just gonna come right alongside this little chimney. And let me just let me just hold this up. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna hold it up so that you can see because it's so tiny. And I'm just I'm just kind of coming in underneath this this roof. And 
even this little detail around the windows, you can just put that back in if you've kind of lost some of that. These little twin tones, they're so nice. And I, I, use, the, I use the green sometimes, but mostly I use the brown and the blue because they're, they're just so tiny to just put that detail back in. And then I think I uh, with I think I'm gonna put some detail in with my pencil. So let me find my here it is. Just some some detail in here. The pencil works so great. It's easy to control, and it's not too dark. So just like that. So now let's put in. A little grassy area like we did in the foreground and just brush in a little bit of this a little bit of this grassy area and then um, I put in some mountains now you could use the mountain stamp if you have that but these are pretty easy to do just brush in a little blue like this And a few little lines like that. Don't over, don't overthink it. And then let's put in uh, those little rocks along the edge of the water. These little guys right here. And I'm just going to use that. This is that blue that I said was all gray. I'm just going to use this and just stamp these in here couple of times there it's just kind of the perfect color and then we can add some grass and we're going to be almost finished with this the tiny grass so this is the tiny one And I'm just going to put a little bit up here, too, where this little cabin is. Kind of right next to it. And then just you just pull the, pull in the color out of the lines. And then this is where you could kind of put in whatever trees you want to put in, something that fits where you live. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, pine trees and fir trees where we are, so that's what I put in. But you could for sure put in any, any that you like. Here's that little one. This is from that tiny little um, foliage set. And actually, let's put in, let's just do the top and just put one in here. And these, you know, you just want to just touch them. Just touch them. And then just kind of pull that, pull that shadow out a little bit. And then we can add a little, uh, we can add a little sky up here. Just to kind of give us that, that, um, that border. And I just put a little warm blue in here too, just to kind of mix it up a little bit.
Okay, I think that looks pretty good, you guys. I think that looks pretty good. Let's do the reveal. And then let's erase that, erase that border off. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna sign a date, uh, maybe over on this side. And let me hold this up so that you can see it. Super easy and so cute. And that one, actually, that was about 15 minutes too. So I guess 15 minutes, that's not too bad. Allow yourself 15 or 20 minutes to make these little guys. And then as you're doing them, you know, the more that you do, uh, the faster edit you're gonna get. You know, especially if you can kind of streamline a little bit and do a few at a time. So let me just really quickly show you how to put one of these together. There is a full tutorial on YouTube on how to do this. So check that out too if you want to um, if you want to see it see more detail or you're not quite getting it. But here's well, here's how to do it. So the first thing you're going to do is cut that opening out for your window, and then uh, cut out your your decorative window pane. So just like this. And I'm just going to use a, uh, I'm just going to use a glue stick here. Got a glue stick. And just put some, some glue on here. And then glue this on. And if you, you know, when you turn the card over, if you don't have it exactly straight, it doesn't matter because you can't see it. The shadow box is going to cover it. So it doesn't matter if it's crooked, you know, you don't have it exactly centered on here. But I always do this part first just because it's easier to, um, to see to line it up. Okay, so once you've got that on, now go back in here and you're going to do the window box or the shadow box. And it's gonna cut out like this. It's gonna look like this and it's got two score lines on either side and you're gonna fold it. You're gonna fold this score line in. So it kind of looks like an L. So just like this, you're gonna score it like this and you're gonna add some glue to, well, actually let's put, let's put a little project inside. So let's just pick one here. Um, let me just find one here. Let's just put this one in, okay? So let's glue this in and just take a, you know, just take whatever adhesive you have. I'm just using the glue stick again. And glue that inside and just cut it you know you can either cut it or you can use that die to cut it so it's a two by two and it'll fit just perfectly in here just like that and now you're going to take this and add some glue to this side okay so it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go over here just like this and that's gonna fold over so you're gonna add some adhesive here to this little edge and let me turn this around so it's easier to see and you're going to glue it to the card and it's it's actually about a probably about a sixteenth away from the actual edge so you're gonna leave just a little bit of a gap there between the edge of the cutout and the shadow box okay and then it's gonna come forward so now you're going to add some glue to this side same lip to the lip and you're going to fold it flat and let it just land where it goes and that's how it stays flat when you mail the mail your card so it goes flat and then when you open it you've got your little project see inside inside your frame and now you can add your um you can add your little windowsill Like this, and maybe your little hello, little hello. Um, just like this. And there's your little project um, inside. That's so cute. That's the one we just finished. And great for anyone. Now you could, 
uh, you could pop that little boat up just like I did with, uh, with this one. You could pop that and bring it forward. Now, when you do that, keep in mind that the thing that pops up, so if it's the boat, it needs to be the thing that's closest to you in the scene. So in other words, you can't pop up that, that little cottage, you know, that little, that little um, cabin. You can't pop that up because it's too far in the distance. The thing that would pop up is the thing that's closest to you when you're looking out the window. So in this case, it would be the little flowers in the front. Those would, those would be what would pop out. In this case, it would be these. So it has to be that thing that's closest to you in the, um, in the picture. Okay. All right, let me flip my camera around. So I hope that, hope that was helpful. And like I said, uh, on YouTube, there is a full tutorial on how to do that. But it's honestly, it's so simple that there's just nothing to it. Okay, so I'm going to put my camera back over here. And see if there are any questions that anyone has for me. Um, did you guys like that project? I, I love it. It was so fun. You can see how you can get carried, carried away with it and just end up doing so many. Try, try it. Try something simple and then try some uh, that are a little more complicated or change out the colors and kind of make it your own. Uh, but really, really fun to do and just, just so, just so easy. Um, I'm not sure I could cover the painting with the windowsill. <laughs> well, you don't have to. You honestly do not have to put the windowsill on. You could leave the windowsill off and just have that frame. Or, you know, you could probably just leave it open too. You could cut, if you don't want the panes on there, you could just take a little X-Acto knife and cut the panes off and just have a little frame around the opening. I think that would be cute too. Uh, Debbie, I just love the projects. Thank you so much, you guys. I hope you love these. I do put a lot of thought into them to make sure that I'm teaching you something new. Uh, I love this technique so much, and I hope that you guys do too. What set do the rocks come from? The rocks come from the Southwest, and I, maybe I didn't show that to you. Uh, the rocks come from the Southwest set, and it is, let me see if I have it in here. It's this one. This little set right here. Uh, do you do the same thing under the pop-up? Um, yes, yes. Uh, I, as far as the boat goes, yes. I would, I would at least stamp it and pull the color out of the lines and then put the pop-up on top. Definitely. That's a good, really good question. Um, the warehouse sale. You, uh, we get asked about that all the time. We, we live in Oregon and it's pretty strict here. So we just never know what's gonna open up. If we can possibly do it, we will. Uh, last year we did it uh, We did it online and actually that was really fun too. So we will figure out something. We'll figure out some way that we can we can do that. Okay, check out the, uh, the little acrylics that are on now available individually. You can check that, those out on our website. And then I will be back in two weeks and we'll do some more of these little mini projects. So uh, I hope you guys will give it a try. I will post on Facebook, I'll post all eight so that you can, uh, you can see them as a reference. Even if we haven't actually done it, give it a try. You know, give it a try in the next two weeks and just see if you can, um, you can do them, I know you can. Um, okay, any other questions you guys might have? Um, so much fun, excited to see. Okay, you guys, I don't see any more questions. Uh, new release is coming, you guys. I've been working on it. You're going to love, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna love teaching it. And I just, I always get so excited about the new stuff. And I think you guys are gonna really, really, really love it. And I can't wait to do it. So it is coming soon. Uh, in the next couple of months, we have, uh, are getting our inventory lined up and getting it in house so that we have it available for you. So it will be coming soon. All right, you all, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it so much. Follow me on uh, YouTube. I'm on YouTube, Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling. Uh, I, all of this will be posted on, on YouTube, so it will stay on Facebook. Uh, it will be posted on YouTube. And then, of course, follow Art Impressions on Instagram and um, Facebook, Pinterest, 
everywhere. We're everywhere. Lots of inspiration for you. You guys have had a lot of, of watercolor this week. <laughs> Lots of inspiration, but so much fun. All right. Have a great rest of the week, all of you, and I will see you uh, in two weeks.